Welcome my wonderful wire weirdos to this tutorial on buffers. With the release of Resolume 7.11 came texture support for the ring buffer and buffer nodes. What it means for you is that you can make all kinds of crazy video delay effects. This tutorial assumes that you understand how instancing works in wire. If you don't, then check out our course on instancing, link in the description below. As for this tutorial, first we'll dive into how buffers work, and after that I'll go a bit off script for a patch along. Buffers are best explained by looking at the example patch. I'll look for the buffer node and open the example patch. Since the ring buffer and buffer are related, they share an example patch. Let's have a look at the patch to see what is going on. There is a metronome triggering a random node that generates a float 2. These are coordinates for the circles. Next they go into a buffer and a ring buffer. The ring buffer circles are blue. They are continuously updated as the first set of coordinates leaves when the buffer reaches peak. The buffer circles are red and they are only updated when the entire buffer is full. This is the big difference between the two. The ring buffer is a first in first out buffer. As the buffer fills up, the first entry will be pushed out of the buffer first. This is quite similar to a queue at a supermarket. The buffer takes a more radical approach. When the buffer is full and receives a new value, it empties the buffer to make space. This concept is both true for numbers and textures. So let's have a look at the textures now. In the example below, we can see the buffer and ring buffer working their magic on this simple animation. We have a circle in a circle pattern growing and shrinking. We use a shape render to render the shape into a texture. Next, we send it to both the ring buffer and the buffer to demonstrate the difference. Both buffers hold 10 frames, as indicated by their size, the amount of instances. With the ring buffer, we get this smooth delay as the oldest frame is replaced each frame. With the buffer, we see this sort of stuttering delay as each 10 frames, the entire buffer is emptied onto the screen. But in between those 10 frames, nothing happens. This gets even more clear when I increase the amount of frames in the buffer node. While we're on the subject of increasing the buffer size, it's time for a word of warning. The buffers are a with great power comes great responsibility kind of deal. Each frame stored in a buffer is in fact stored on the VRAM of your graphics card. VRAM is your video memory. When you buy a graphics card, you often read about the amount of gigabytes that the card has. Wire allows you to fill all that precious VRAM up and beyond. And that's why I think it is important to understand how big a frame is. If we want to know the frame size of this 1920 by 1080 patch, we simply multiply the width and height with each other and then multiply by 4 because there's a red, green, blue and alpha channel. We end up with little over 8 million bytes, which is something around 8 megabytes. If we create a buffer with 60 frames, we end up storing something close to 460 megabytes in memory. This should not be a big problem for modern graphic cards, but if you end up storing, let's say, 240 frames, you'll run into issues rather quickly. The texture bit depth set in the patch panel also plays a role here. The higher the bit depth, the larger the frames. Keep this in mind when you're developing effects with the intent of selling them to other people. With this technical bit out of the way, let me go off script for a bit and make some cool stuff with buffers. Alright, uh, back in wire uh, for a little buffer demonstration. I've got this clip from our structures pack running and let's see if we can make something cool with it. So uh, I'll create the buffer node. Uh, the size is default to 10, so we're holding 10 frames now. Can already see a bit of it. Let's increase it to let's say 30. Yeah, now we can really see the growing and, and popping of the buffer. Uh, we can see the current size, how many frames are in buffer at, uh, at, uh, at that very moment. We can pop the top of the buffer, which is more relevant when you're working with values than with textures. And we can, of course, reset the entire buffer if we wanted to. 
So we get these 30 textures out and I thought it would be interesting to see if we can transform them, like change the size, for example. Um, of course, we can scale everything, but it would be more relevant to scale each texture to a different size. Uh, for that, I'll create a linear node, which gives us a collection of floats running from zero to one. Uh, by default, it's 10, but I want 30 because I have 30 coming from here. So, and let's increase the minimum value because a scale of zero is nothing. And let's see what happens if we toss that in. Mm, ah, of course it shrinks now, so the minimum value should be one and then maybe increase the maximum value. Nice. All right. That's a pretty interesting, interesting effect. Um, now what I would like to do is combine it with the original image. That would be nice. So I'll create a video mixer just so we have some sort of a background when the, because now we have the popping, like it completely disappears at some point. And let's just take the original clip, put it on the bottom layer. Uh, we don't want to do this because, well, I can show you what happens. Now we have an instance video mixer. So we're basically creating 30 video mixers, which drops my FPS by almost 15 frames the moment I do that. Let's not do that. Instead, we will merge everything into a single texture, throw it in here, wire automatically in, uh, adjusts the instance count to one, and we're back to a healthy uh, FPS. I'm running 55, but I'm running multiple, uh, like I'm r running recording software uh, and um, a mo video capture software all at the same time. So that's not that bad. Uh, and now we have the background clip, or we could even like fade, fade it over, right? So what I think would be cool to make this BPM, uh, this effect BPM synced, that would be a nice one. So for this, I'll create the transport beat, which gives us a trigger uh, on each beat, bar, whatever you like. So I'll start the transport running here and we can see it, it generates an integer, which is not relevant to us. We want the, the, the trigger. Um, and then on each, yeah, on each beat, I want to reset the buffer. Let's see what happens. All right. We already have the bouncing. Now if I decrease the BPM to 30, increase it to 40. All right. But I think, of course, the buffer will fill up even though we're sending a trigger. So we want to mitigate that. Probably reducing the opacity. Yeah, I think op reducing the opacity of the uh, uh, of this channel. Basically, we want to boom bounce this up and down on the beat. So I'll create an attack release node. For those who don't know what this does, it takes a trigger and it runs from zero to one over. Uh, it runs from zero to one over the attack time, which is just like a half second now and runs back to zero uh, over the, uh, yeah, from one to zero over the release time. So it goes up in a half second and it releases in three seconds. That's way too long. And you can say restart at zero, that's fine for us. And I'll plug this into, into here. And I can probably shorten this even further. And this should basically be our BPM synced buffer. Does it match? Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah, it matches. All right. Um, I still see I'm running a bit low on frames right now. So what I'll do, a little trick we can do to do that, uh, to mitigate that, is right now 
the patch is running at 920 by 10, uh, 1080 pixels, which is uh, well, perfectly fine. But if you have a little less strong machine, uh, you could resize the original. So we'll resize this. We'll say that it has to fill the entire screen and we'll resize it to half the size and I throw it into the buffer. This is now a 960 by 50, uh, 550 pixels texture, which runs into our buffer, which stays all the time until it gets into the merge. Merge merges it back to the original size. And I think graphically there is almost no distinction. Let's grow this a little and see what's the difference. We could say patch size. Oh, I have to lock this for a bit. So let's see. This is at full patch size. Looks good. Half patch size. You can barely see a difference because it's it's already faded. The, because the original clip stays at uh, 920 by 1080p. So whenever the effect is not happening, we're just seeing the normal clip. And it's just the fade that is uh, reduced in quality. But it's so fast, even at 40 B, uh, just 40 BPM, if we crank it up to 120, yeah, you don't really, you, there's no need for that extra resolution. Just for uh, uh, for laughs, let's see what happens if we go to a uh, four. Now you start to see it. Now you start to uh, see, I hope that's visible, visible in the screen recording as well. But uh, just to exaggerate it, let's go eight. And now you get this really pixelated. We're working at, uh, what's, what's the size we're working at now? Uh, yeah, we're going to 240 by 135. Uh, let's not do that. Let's put it at, uh, at half, just for optimization sake. And we have a pretty cool BPM synced uh, delay effect here. One final thing we should uh, note here is that our clip has some transparency. But what if we add a clip that is that does, doesn't have any transparency? We should fix that. So we can do that by adding uh, let's, you could do this many ways. You could do a chroma key. You should do, could do an auto mask. Uh, you could use a luma key. Uh, whatever you need, something to introduce to filter out a certain part of the image to create uh, transparency. Because if your entire image is um, your entire yeah image is full, there is no tra transparent pixels in it. Then there is nothing to. Um, then it won't be visible as the buffers will just be on uh, the buffer textures will just be on top of each other and you can't see them. So I'll go really simple and I'll say um, there is this thing called transition. A little hack. Put the transition in. And this is basically how you want to transition from one clip to another. Uh, but if you just put in one layer and you can pick a Luma key here and we can Luma key the signal now for our um for for this effect it's not very relevant but already put it in as a uh, as a fail safe for when i export this as an effect because we want to export it as an effect of course so create a float in called it luma key and i'll add it to the face now we have this thing I'll default it to zero and we could do even something like the size, scale it up like two might be cool. So I'll create another float in, I'll call it size. It runs from one, uh, from zero to one, which is fine. And then I'll add a one. Because I like my, uh, I like it when my values all run from zero to one. I think it gives a clean interface. So by default, it's if its size is at zero, nothing happens. And then as we scale up here, we eventually end up with a size of two because we're adding one to it. Anything else we can add? Um, 
We could give the user control over the attack and release time, but I don't think it's very relevant. You can do that yourself if you like. So I'll create a texture out. There we go. And I'll remove the clip, replace it for a texture in. These are the uh, textures. This, this is like your effect and this is your output. So the clip you're applying it to and the output of the effect. Now I had this clip loaded up and it's still under my resources. So I have to remove that uh, because there's no point in saving this clip to the patch. Uh, you can remove it by clicking on it and uh, removing it. Another nice trick here is going under wire and there's a button called clear unused resources and it remove all unused resources that is shaders, images and videos that uh, are not being used in the patch. So bloop, that's gone. I'll go to my patch. I'll call it um, super BPM buffer thingy. And I'll rename it. Uh, I'll give it a category of effect. And then at the end of the tutorial, I'll um, we'll go back to Arena and we'll take a look at this one. Um, I'll save this. Super BPM buffer thingy, awesome. And let's move on to the ring buffer, create an effect there, and after that, test them both in Arena. Well, let's go. All right, uh, back for part two. Here we're gonna try to play with the ring buffer. Um, let's throw this in. You can already see the delay trails going on. Let's again bump it up 30 frames, just like the previous example. And we have these big long trails going on. We have 30 textures coming out. We have a boolean that tells us whether the ring buffer is full or not. Um, we have the current size. So that takes into account if the ring buffer isn't full, then what is its size? Because now its size is just equal to uh, 30, as stated here. Um, and we have the index, which is the latest updated frame. This is a really powerful one. You can do a lot of stuff with it because you know what the most recent frame is, as well as resetting the entire buffer, right? Um, so to be honest, I already really like this trails kind of effect and uh, I wanna keep it simple with this one. So my idea was to um, apply an effect to each different frame. For this, you have to take a little bit into account the type of effect. You do not wanna be applying 30 blurs. That will be very heavy just for experiment's sake. That will drop my FPS down to 20 as blur is a very expensive effect. So uh, let's take something more simple. Let's do a, a hue rotate. Let's make a, we'll make a rainbow rainbow delay right so we could we can hue rotate but now we're hue rotating hue rotating all the clips at uh, all the frames at the same time so we probably want to throw something like a linear node in here let's make it 30 0 to 1 which is fine and there we already have our eye burning rainbow now um, this can get quite expensive as well, as we're working with 30 frames, and we don't need 30 frames for this effect to look cool. We have a lot of frames that are just like really overlaying on top of each other, um, so we're using way more processing power than we actually need. Um, I think we would uh, get it done with 7, 8, let's do 7, 7 frames. Um, for this, I'll make a read note. So we're reading from the buffer. Currently, we're reading one frame, but read can be instanced as well. So I could say uh, read frame, uh, and then we need to say here seven. So now we're just, so now we're reading seven frames, right? This is not a very practical way to do that, as we get the stuttering now. 
but we could say the max is the current index. What happens when we do that? So now we're already having seven clips, but they're current all the time updated. The best way to do it, because we want to sort of go back in time, if that makes any sense, like you want to, uh, you're doing a delay, so you want the uh, frames that are in the past, that are in the buffer already. So what I'll do is I'll create a subtract node, a math subtract, and I'm subtracting, um, let's say, go to five here. Uh, no, we want this at 30, because we're having 30 frames. Um, ah, I'm doing something wrong. I'm using a linear. I was already looking at the float values like this. does not make any sense. We want to have a sequence as we have integers, because this is an integer as well. Um, we want steps of 5. And we want to reach a size of seven. That should, yeah, zero to thirty. That's how I had. That's how I had this thing planned. So now we end up with seven values, and we're subtracting from the index. So we're going lower than um, the current current size, the latest the latest frame in the buffer. It's kind of hard to wrap your head around this stuff. So now. We have seven, seven frames of delay. And now we can create a linear, go to seven frames, and you rotate it. And there we have it. I think this one reads much clearer than just throwing 30 frames into it. It is lighter on the, frame, uh, on the, on the graphics card. And we could give the user, of course, a float in with uh, call it U shift. We can give the user control over this. So as, as the slider goes up, we introduce more and more color. Let's multiply this. Let's say five, three. Is that a good thing? Going over one, Ah, this is better. Oh, you can make your own variation on this. Um, on variation on this. So we have our little rainbow um, ring buffer effect. I hope this makes a little bit more clear how a ring buffer works, especially with the index. So the index is the most recent clip. And if you subtract from that value, you get the clips before that, or the, I'm saying clips, I should say, like textures before that. So this is a way of going deeper into, using subtract is like going deeper into the buffer. But you also don't want to, um, because you don't want to go, you don't want to add, because then you're reading frames that are not there yet. Anyway, complicated stuff. <laughs> I'll throw away the clip. I'll Clear the un unused resources. I'll add a texture in for our effect and a texture out. Uh, oh, here is an important step missing. Now we're sending an instance texture out. I just wanna make sure we merge that into a single channel. And then we'll call this Turbo Rainbow Delay and make this an effect. I'll save this, open it up in Arena and let's see what we can do with it. All right, here we're back in Arena. Uh, I've applied the effect we just made. We have the super BPM buffer thingy applied to this uh, girl over here. Uh, we can Luma key it if needed. And she's bouncing on the beat. If I reduce this to 60, she should be bouncing slower. And she is. Great. Same effect applied to this clip. Let's see. If I turn it all the way off, this is a normal clip. 
Now it's bouncy. Maybe we can do a 50 add or Luma key it. Maybe reduce the size. Introduce some transparency with the Luma key. Yeah, you could even try like a difference maybe. Or uh, noisy. Oh, that's a that was a terrible idea. <laughs> um, let's keep it to alpha. So that's working as well. Then we take a look at our uh, turbo rainbow delay that we've made. If I bypass it, this is the original clip. And then we have all these U-shifted clips coming through. We In the patch, we did not pass the original signal through. So even the, um, the normal clips, uh, the original clip also gets U-saturated. You can bypass this if you want to, you, uh, just like we did with the other delay. Let's just send the original signal through into a video mixer. So that's great. Final clip, same idea. We have our turbo going on, our turbo rainbow delay on, and it's working as intended. So I hope this in uh, tutorial was helpful to you. I hope my off script rambling wasn't uh, too much to bear. Hope you learned a thing or two. If you have any questions about the buffers and ring buffers, feel free to drop the questions below in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.